What's up you guys, it's Graham here. So I wanna talk about what you don't really see behind the scenes of every success story you see, myself included. What a lot of you guys see is someone successful. You see someone who has you know, the car, you see someone who has you know, the houses and the properties and the money and you know, all the cool things that you see from the outside. But it's not very often that you see what's going on behind the scenes and what a lot of people had to go through in order to have made it to that point or to have gotten to that point. Because I can assure you, with every success, there's almost always some sort of sacrifice that had to be made along the way. There were always these things that would come up that would be devastating along the way and struggles along the way that you don't always see. And a lot of it is, is internal. A lot of these things that I've been through, nobody would ever know. I mean, you, you get very good at like hovering things up you know, not sharing them, but, and plus nobody really digs deep enough to really know how like you really are feeling most of the time. So it's very easy for these things to go unnoticed, but I wanna share a few of these things with you guys. And just so you know what's going on behind the scenes of really almost everybody. I'm sure it's not just me. I'm gonna be sharing these just from my own experiences, but I'm sure we've all been through them too. You know, we're all human, we all go through the same thing. So it's not like I'm the one unique person out there. So anyway, these are a few of the things that I thought I would mention that you guys haven't seen behind the scenes. The first and probably one of the biggest one is the loneliness. And again, when I first started selling real estate, I was the only 18 year old kid who was selling real estate. All my friends went off to college and it was just little old Graham. And at that point, I had a very hard time relating to other people because I was in an office pretty much every single day with people much older than me that were in their mid 30s, late 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I was surrounded by these people all day long as an 18 year old kid. And during the days I was busy working. I was trying to hustle. I was trying to like, you know, make a name for myself in real estate. I was trying to make money in real estate and be successful and prove everyone else wrong that an 18 year old kid can't sell real estate. That's where my focus was. Now all my friends were off in, you know, college, having a great time, you know, partying, doing, doing whatever they were doing. I was at work. And when I would go see my friends again, I felt like such an adult. And it's really weird when you're surrounded by all of these like 50 year olds and 60 year olds and 40 year olds and you're 18 and you feel like you've just grown up 10 years in a matter of like maybe a few months. So I would go and see all my friends when they'd be back from college and I would have such a hard time relating to them. I would see everybody just going like doing keg stands and stupid shit like that. I'd be like, guys, what are we doing? We should be working. You know, no one at my work would ever be doing this stuff. This is stupid. And it, it just with your head a little bit because you're you're a kid you're an 18 year old kid you should be doing those things those things should be fun but you get stuck in this like old person mentality that like you're above that and that that's stupid and that's pointless and you should be working instead so there was a period for really i would say three four years where i had very few friends very few friends i think i maybe had like one maybe two maybe and i just filled my time with work instead it was a really really lonely time for me. That was tough and uh, you know I, I forgot about the toughness just by working so hard and when you're that busy and that focused and you work yourself to the bone and then you get home and like all you want to do is sleep because you've worked all day. You know even though I was happy with work at the same time like I wasn't that fulfilled in terms of friendships and stuff like that. And so it took me a while to eventually start like meeting new friends and it's so hard to meet friends. So hard to meet friends as an adult. You don't even think about it. Like in school, it's so easy in high school to make these friends because you're, you constantly see each other every day. But when you're out in the real world, making a friend is really hard. Uh, I, do, I spent a lot of time trying to develop friendships and I was like, I would be super awkward because like when you haven't hung out with someone for that long of a time and then you start like trying to hang out with people again, it's, it's just like uneasy and you feel weird and like anxious and you know, awkward and stuff like that. So it took me a while to learn to cultivate the friendships that I have now and get to the point where like now it's easy again and now you've got friends again. So that was one of the things that, you know, not a lot of people see it. And I'm sure I can't be the only one who's felt like this. I, I know I post some of these videos and I read some of the comments down below of people that have been through the same thing as me. So that's one of those things that the big one for me is loneliness. Now the second thing are all the sacrifices that go along with that. Now, you know, I, I didn't really sacrifice college because that was something that I didn't really get in to begin with and I never went to college. But that is something that, you know, I, I look back and part of me kind of wants a little bit of that college experience. And I'm sure this is always, the grass is always greener, 
you know, on the other side, I'm sure this is one of those experiences because had I gone to college, I'd be like, what would it be like to not have any college debt or to have, you know, be working instead? But, you know, it seems like a lot of my friends had such a great time in, in college, you know, and, and building those friendships and those connections. And, you know, I, I didn't get to do that. So I might call that a little bit of a sacrifice that I had to go through to get to where I am. But it's also a sacrifice on, you know, I didn't really go on many vacations in the beginning of my career. I had to give up a lot of that. I didn't really have weekends because I'd be working instead. Now, granted, this is something I had a lot of fun doing. But at the same time, I was not a very well-rounded person. I wasn't a person that you can go and like hang out with on weekends or something. I was a person that was just like 100% real estate. And maybe that's how I had to be. Like I, I have no regrets over this. Maybe I had to be 100% focused on real estate in order to have gotten what I have gotten. But you know, at the same time, I was a pretty narrow focused person. It was just real estate. You talked to me about anything else, I didn't know anything. I had no idea what was going on. It was just, it was just real estate. So there were sacrifices along the way that I had to make, um, especially even when it came to investing. I didn't spend any money. I spent very little money. I wouldn't spend money unless I absolutely had to spend money. I wouldn't really go out when I would go out to dinner, maybe with like a friend or something. I'd get an appetizer instead of the entree because I'd rather save the money instead. So I, I made a lot of little sacrifices throughout the way. And again, you know, I, I don't regret these decisions because I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for those decisions. But at the same time, there were sacrifices that I had to make at the time in order to get what I wanted in the future. The third thing is the stress. And I can't tell you how stressed out I've been in the past with certain deals where I wasn't sure if they were gonna close or not. And I, I, I can't express how invested I am in my clients getting a house. First of all, when somebody trusts me with something, I am immediately just like, I want to make sure they're satisfied and they're taken care of. If a client gives me a listing, I'm like, oh shit, I have to deliver. The last thing I'd ever wanna do is disappoint somebody. And that, for me, is probably the biggest thing is I don't wanna disappoint anybody. And the stress associated with that is, is huge. Now, again, this is my own problem. You know, it's, I'm stressing myself out, but I place such an importance on meeting or exceeding someone's expectations that I want it to be perfect. So when I get a listing, I'm like, they trusted me enough to give me the listing and I have to make sure they're happy with it. And sometimes I've had deals that get really close to not closing or something comes up and I'm like freaking the fuck out just because I don't know what's gonna happen. Same thing with the stress of even buying my first property. I was super nervous about buying my first rental property. Even though as an agent who had you know, assisted in you know, a few dozen people buying a home, and I was buying my first home and for like $60,000, I was freaking out thinking like, this is, is this a mistake? Am I doing the right thing? I don't know what I'm doing. I actually had the agent who was working with me at the time helping me find one of these, these real estate listings. Um, she quit on me uh, midway through two escrows. She was in escrow with, with me for two places. She quit on me because she couldn't take that I was just like, freaking out all the time and calling her all the time and like you know asking if she's done certain things or then like telling her she's not doing something fast enough and it needs to be done like immediately because i was freaking out i was worried i was scared and she quit on me like that's how bad it is um even the stress of just sometimes like not knowing if you're making the right decisions you know half the times i have no idea what i'm doing i just make the best decision that i think i can make but in the back of my mind i'm always thinking is this the right decision and you don't really know until it pans out and there's a lot of stress involved in that. And a lot of stress involved in the liability of you know, working in real estate and maybe saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing or encroaching on someone else's you know, listing in a way that you, know, you don't wanna ruin any relationships. There's a lot of stress that's involved in this. Now, I'm sure too on the flip side, there's a lot of stress in any industry. There's a lot of stress in being forced to wake up on Monday at 6 a.m. to go to your job that you hate. I get it, it's a different type of stress. But there is a lot of things that go in the background that. Obviously, I think a lot of you guys don't necessarily see what's going on, um, but you know, I, I am you know, stressed and worried every now and then about certain deals and certain things, and I don't know if I'm making the right choice. And then you just you have to make a decision and stick to it and hope that's the right one, and that's what I do most of the time. And the fourth thing is the doubt. I mean, we've all been there. I've, I doubt myself all the time. I doubt what I'm doing. I doubt what I'm doing is working. I doubt I'm making the right decisions. I, I doubt myself all the time. And you know, I think this is a universal thing for everybody. Sometimes when I think of something, even, even a property that I'm gonna be buying, even though I've been doing this for such a long time and you know, I can look objectively at other people's deals and be like, 
to me that's perfect. When you're doing it yourself, I just end up doubting myself all the time, just because it's me. If I see someone else doing it and someone else asks me what they think of a property, I have no problem with that. But because it's me, for myself, I'm always doubting it. It happens all the time. It happens with homes I'm investing in, it happens with remodeling I'm doing, with things that I'm picking out. There's a lot of, I, I ask Snapchat half the time, like which one should I get, A or B? All the time I do that. Like Snapchat helped pick out this desk here. Dude, like that's how, that's how I couldn't pick between two desks, this and a glass one. Snapchat screenshotted this guy the most, so I bought that desk, but there's a lot of doubt that goes into it. Same when I started selling real estate when I was 18, I had a lot of doubt whether or not I'd actually be able to do it, whether or not I'd actually be successful doing that. Because my alternative was that if I didn't do well in real estate, I had high school diploma, no college degree, no real like skill, like I can play the drums, you know, but I didn't want to be one of these like street performers playing the drums in front of everybody, making no money, living in a van out front of the Roxy Theater on Sunset. I didn't want to be, you know, that, that dude. But it's a lot of doubt that goes into it too. So it's, it's a constant just like, you see the doubt and you just have to like break past it all the time. It happens all the time. And it's just, you know, conquering that doubt and that fear that you have and just going forward and then again, second guessing yourself all the time and then looking back and being like, all right, I made the right decision, I came out okay, all right, let's keep going. And with that also comes the uncertainty of not knowing what's gonna happen. And there's a lot of things too that I just don't know how things are gonna pan out. There are a lot of different you know, forks in the road as you go throughout your career, where sometimes you get to a fork and you're not sure if you should go right or left, but you feel like right's maybe the better way, so you go right, but always wonder like, should I have gone left instead? So there's always a little bit of uncertainty in that too. Even with me and my career, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how the market is gonna be doing next year, if I'm gonna be able to meet the goals that I've set for next year, if I'm not going to be able to do the things that I want to do. If I want to start you know, doing XYZ, I've, I've taken on a few coaching clients, by the way. Um, if I want to pursue, like, how is that going to go if I go down that route? Is it going to be something I want to do? Is it going to be helpful to other people? Are people going to enjoy it? There's a lot of uncertainty in that. And I think that is just a lot just my own mind games. But again, I feel like this is something we all tend to go through. It's a universal truth of just being a person and you know, going through all of these things and these struggles. So all of these things I would say are just the struggles that go behind any person's success. And I think it's something that when you start becoming successful, you end up going through these things. And I don't think anybody is immune to it. I don't think there's ever been a person who became successful and was just like, yeah, man, I'm confident every step of the way, man, I knew it, I got it. You know, either that person's lying or they're just delusional. But I believe that we've all been there and I believe these are all things that we're going through and I just, I would like to normalize these things and share with you guys that like, we all go through it. All of us are exactly the same. There's very little that separates me from all of you watching. It's, you know, we all, we're all the same, you know? We're all the same. That's the way I, that's the way I see it. And it's just about understanding these things, realizing they're totally normal, realizing that you're not the only one that feels this way and then moving past it and understanding that 90% of all of this stuff is just in your head anyway. I hope you guys can relate to it and I hope that I'm not the only one. So as always you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait five seconds for you to click that subscribe button. Four, three, two, one, okay, you click subscribe. Now you're gonna go to that notification bell and smash that notification bell so YouTube can sometimes let you know when I post a video. They've been good about it lately, by the way. They've, like, the last three videos that I posted, notifications all went out. Thank you, YouTube. And the last three have not been demonetized. Thanks, YouTube. Score for Graham Stephan. So, um, what else besides that? If you want to add me on Snapchat and Instagram, I post there pretty much daily, so if you wanna add me there, Feel free to add me. My recommendation is first add me on Snapchat because I generally post a little bit more cool stuff on Snapchat, but I post some really cool pictures on Instagram. So it's kind of like switch it up between the two. So if you want to add me there, feel free to add me there. And um, thank you again for watching. Until next time.